the latest news, national issues, the political scene, and conversations with prominent personalities. All these firsthand at the forefront. Good morning. I am Attorney Karen Jimeno. Americans choose tomorrow on who between incumbent U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris or former President Donald Trump will be their next president. Because of its political and economic influence, all eyes are on the U.S. elections, anticipating what appears to be a down-the-wire finish. What are the key implications of the U.S. elections to the Philippines? To give us an academic debate on the pros and cons of either a Harris or Trump win, we have former National Security Advisor and currently the Chief Policy Advisor of the House of Representatives, former UP and Ateneo University Professor, Dr. Clarita Carlos. Good morning, Dr. Clarita. Hi, good morning, Karen. Um, in my book, uh, I think it doesn't matter who wins. Uh, America is setting up uh, another Fortress America. Another Fortress America. Very well said. On the other side, we have a former congressman, a former professor of sociology and public administration at UP Diliman, an international adjunct professor at Birmingham University, Dr. Walden Bello. Good morning, Dr. Walden. Uh, good morning, Karen. I'm ha happy you, enjoy, uh, you invited me here. Thank you. So let's start with first looking at, well, do you have a statement, sorry, Dr. Walden, in terms of the U.S. elections? Oh, well, it's a very important event. It has global implications. And who does win will have, make a difference in terms of uh, foreign policy towards the global south and towards the Philippines. But you don't have a preference as who do you think would be better for Philippines? No, I don't think. Well, I think both of them won't be good for us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that first starter. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with first, whoever wins. How do you think will either a Harris or Trump win affect U.S. policy in terms of the Philippines' foreign policy direction? Me first or Walden? Well, we yeah. can start yeah, with whoever. ladies first, yes. Uh, I think if we were to be uh, guided by what Trump uh, the first did, and if he wins this time, uh, he will be good for the region, uh, with all due respect, Walden. Mainly because he was the only president who met with Kim Jong-un. You remember he went to the Panmunjom area, mm -hmm. and he said, oh, what is this line here that divides uh, the north and the south? This is the line. Okay, well, wala siyang pakialam doon sa ano yung symbolism nun line. No president has done that. And then after that, siyempre, sinakens niya si Kim Jong-un. Tapos sinawakan niya dito sa likod, sabi niya, lika mag-hamburger tayo. <laughs> Only Trump can do that. Well, I say he's good for the region because um, I think Harris will follow another Biden uh, foreign policy, which is to go to war, etc. And maybe because she lacks things between her ears, maybe she will not go to war. Okay, uh, sorry huh, for being blunt about it, but yes. Uh, so um, I think if you add the pluses and the minuses, uh, Trump, despite all his protectionist declarations, may still be good for the region, plus the fact that he's a businessman, you know? Si singilin daw niya in Taiwan dahil hindi niya defending. Baka singilin pa niya tayo dahil sa EDGA, no? Si singilin din daw niya yung Japan and South Korea for defending them. And siyempre, sisingilin niya Europe uh, dahil sa NATO. So, pag tinignan mo yung kanyang pattern na mahilig siyang maningil, uh, baka he will be good for the world. <laughs> good for the world. But yeah. for, I guess for the Philippines, we won't be able to afford it considering how ah, pag much Pag tayo. <laughs> yes. And the, Dr. Walden, what's your take on foreign policy direction of the Philippines, depending on who wins? Well, um, just uh, very quickly, uh, one is, uh, I think, he'll be unpredictable for the region. President Trump. Uh, President Trump, um, for a number of reasons, which have already been articulated by Professor Carlos. Uh, secondly, um, 
if Trump wins, it won't be good for global climate uh, because he's a denialist. Uh, and then for the Philippines, um, you know, he's very personalistic and he doesn't like the fact that uh, Harris was very close to Marcos. And I think that will, uh, that will influence the way at least he initially responds to the Marcos uh, administration. So, uh, so it's going to be an interesting, unpredictable posture towards uh, Marcos Jr. So in terms of foreign policy direction of the Philippines, you would think there's more continuity and predictability if Harris won. Are you asking me? Yes, Dr. Wallen, based on what you said um, about Trump. Uh, yes, there's going to be, um, uh, if Harris wins, it's predictable uh, where it's going to happen. There will be more tension uh, with China, uh, more threats of war in the area. Uh, and and um, because it's, as Professor Carlos said, she's still going to be just following the Biden um, paradigm, Biden blueprint. Uh, um, if Trump wins, on the other hand, it's unpredictability. Mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, but if I may add to yes. that, uh, I have seen, uh, and I agree with you for most parts, Walden, uh, I have seen so many... Uh, how do you call this, uh, interviews and off-the-cuff uh, appearances of Kamala Harris. And he was here, she was here also. Uh, I was no longer NSA at the time, but I did get some feedback about how she uh, uh, acted at the time, how she behaved when she was here. And I am not very optimistic about her because at least with Trump, uh, Trump is a true blue businessman and knows what's happening. Uh, and the other one is, uh, doesn't know what is happening. Uh, I know there are so many, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, parang uh, parodies about her. And there is a basis for that. I'm sorry to be blunt about it, uh, Karen and Walden. But yes, if this person wins, uh, she will be shaped by whoever her advisors are. And if her advisors will be in the likes of Austin and Blinken, that will be Tama si Walden. More of the same thing. Kasi pag wala kang deep-seated uh, beliefs about certain things, uh, you will go this way and that way. Yan ang nakakatakot sa kanya pag siya nanalo. Yung kay Trump kasi, si Trump, eh, eh pagka ano yun, iba, sanggano siya, and he knows really what he's doing. And even if he, he declared uh, one time na uh, hindi naman siya mahilig magbasa, um, I'm sure meron siyang saviness na nakuha niya uh, bilang Trump. And uh, parang magka-age ata kami niyan, Walden. Mm -hmm. 7 to 18 siya, eh, di ba? About uh, the same age. And um, I think this will be a plus for him. So still, uh, siguro kung ako nagboboto dyan, ay uh, bobotohin ko siya, si Trump. Would you know if he's the oldest elect? A president to be elected if he wins this 2024 elections at age 78. You know, but I believe so. Because no? si Biden, no? parang mas bata pa siya yeah. ano, no. when he was. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that's true. I think Biden was younger. Oh, oh yeah. So in in a recent interview, Philippine Ambassador to the United States Jose Manuel Romualdez said that regardless of who wins, the Philippine-U.S. relations will remain strong. Do you agree with that view? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's very well known that I have disagreed with uh, Romualdez on many issues, many times. So um, I hope he's right. But you don't think it's certain? Uh, nothing is certain, but uh, coming from him, I don't think so. Oh, I'm I sorry, think... huh? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yes, Dr. Wallace. Uh, uh, well, I, I think his. Um, uh, Ambassador Romualdez is trying to put the best face on what is going to be a crisis for the Marcos administration. As I said, um, Harris and Marcos and Biden have been so identified with one another and the kind of foreign policy that they have that uh, if, if Trump wins, um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he, he will not, uh, he will behave as uh, towards uh, Marcos, um, 
as allies of the Biden-Harris administration. Uh, now, how he deals with that uh, is, is going to be uh, uh, something that we need to really look at. But there will be uh, uh, changes. As, uh, as Professor Carlos has already said, maybe in a half-joking way, baka singilin rin, like in South Korea and in, and in, uh, and in Japan. Where he's, he told them that they have to raise their contributions by uh, about um, uh, four times in the case of Japan and five times in the case of Korea, contributions to keep U.S. troops there. Mm -hmm. Now, Pero what would be... Now, if I may cut you there, yeah. akala kasi ng tao, ang U.S. ang naggagastos dyan. Remember, president ako mm -hmm. ng NDCP? Palagi ako nandyan. Mm -hmm. Wala silang ginagastos. Mm -hmm. Pati housing mm -hmm. ng, ano, mm -hmm. di ba 35,000 yan? Mm -hmm. So we went to their bases, Karen. Lahat yan. Underwritten by both South Korea and Japan. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Parang ewan ko, Walden, kung ba't ayaw nilang palabasin mm -hmm. na kanya nga nagtaka ako noon kung bakit sinisingil sila ni, ano na, hoy, mm -hmm. sinabi mo, mm -hmm. dapat erase mo by how many times. Mm -hmm. Eh, sila nga nag-aano niyan, nagbabankroll niyan eh. Meaning, Japan is bankrolling the U.S. forces in Japan, and, in and the Korea. same with South Korea. Mm -hmm. What about oh. Philippines? Are we paying for anything, or are we getting well, the U.S. as grants or assistance? I think we're, uh, in terms of the Philippines, I think that we've given the United States uh, nine bases already. Yes, and Kasai. Uh, yes. yes, and um, it, you know, you know, Trump is smart. He knows that. Marcos is sitting on top of about $10 billion abroad in personal assets. And uh, I, I would not be surprised if that came into the negotiations about a new relationship, the money that Marcos holds abroad. So uh, he's a businessman. So I think Malacanang would be worried if Trump came to power. And you mean anything might be used as leverage as well, including the Marcos wealth that is in the United sure. States? Sure, and, and, and Trump knows that. There's $10 billion in Western countries in which the Marcos family has invested. And that's a very great point of leverage for blackmail diplomacy. Well, then Never is it a matter of, of fact? I've heard that uh, talked about. Is that $10 billion, like a number? Yes, yes. Yeah. I was going to ask the same question. Yeah, what oh, is the oh. basis for saying there's oh. $10 billion yeah. dollars in Because I've read about it. I've read about it. reference yeah. point. And I know. I have, oh. I, Are those I have, frozen assets or oh, oh. Uh, it, it's, actual it's, cash? It's, um, it's been estimated by various sources in various Western countries mainly, uh, some of which is in the United States, but not all of it in the United States. But it is the first time that I've heard the word blackmail diplomacy as used. So, <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Walden, yeah. Sige, oh, Karen, dagdag ko yung sinabi ni, uh, uh, ni Walden. Ano. Uh, kasi nga, sundan natin yung pattern na businessman tong tao na to, <laughs> naniningil. Okay. Uh, total naniningil siya. Huwag tayong magtanga-tanga and let's be smart, uh, ano, intelligent about it. I think I mentioned that to you nung gines mo ko sa program mo. Hindi ba meron tayong mutual defense treaty, Walden? Yes. 1951. Uh, alam mo naman yun eh, talagang unequal yun, mm. kumbaga, to use the term of China. No? Uh, so, uh, total, si uh, Trump naman, pwede mo siyang kausapin talaga yung uh, on the ground. Pwede mo sa kanya, uh, total yung ironclad promises niyo kung sino-sino nagsasabi niyan, laway lang yan. Ilagay mo yun sa MDT. Ilagay mo yung Article 5 ng NATO dyan. Article 5 yung automaticity. Wala yun eh, di ba? Diba pa ganyan-ganyan, pa swing-swing sila dun sa mga sinasabi ng State Department Secretary nila. Hingin mo yun, humingi ka ng review ng MDT, which by the way, which is study uh, team, ako yung leader bago ako umalis as, as NSA. And tignan natin kung ano yung sagot ni Trump. Pag sabi ni Trump, oh hindi, i-approgate mo yung treaty. O di wala na tayo dun. And then sinabi ko, let's move sideways. Mag-join na tayo ng BRICS, FCO, etc. Mag-join tayo ng any organization na pwede maging robas ang economy natin. So, uh, if we are smart, intelligent about it, I'm sure, well, then, ganun din ang pananaw mo, no? Uh, we will win on many fronts. Just, just be smart about it. 
You mean you just have to find ways to negotiate and have certain leverages when you're negotiating with someone like Trump? Yes, it's not as if we are a desert. We are not. We're the fifth most mineralized country in the world. Fifth, ha? Malang, ibig sabihin, ang dami-dami natin sa ilalim ng lupa natin. I mean, ilang million kami nila Walden at saka ikaw, Karen. Ipagsama mo yung natural resources at saka human resources. Abay, panalo talaga tayo. Well, including the blue economy, which yes, is diba? something that Andyan is larger lahat, eh. for us, all the, our uh, yeah. territorial waters. And since we're talking about resources and economic uh, relations as well, how would a change in leadership affect the U.S. trade and economic relations with respect to the Philippines? Do you think this would have an impact on our economy? Well, uh, alam naman natin that uh, Trump mahilig siya sa raising mga tariffs. Yes. Uh, and uh, he's already said he's going to raise tariffs by 100% with respect <laughs> yata to China. No? Yeah. But it's not only China. It's uh, yeah. all the countries that that have uh, relations, trade relations with the United States should expect, you know, that they may be affected too, which means that the, the Philippines itself could be affected by this because particularly our export yes, economy, our, uh, our exports to the United States. Plus, uh, as I said, he is a very personalistic politician, and uh, he's going to look at the close relationship between Biden and Harris and the Marcos people. Uh, and that's going to be f in, that will be factored into the way that he relates to the administration. Kaya, I disagree with uh, Ambassador Romualdez. I think he's putting a best face to what is going to be a lot of apprehension in uh, Malacanang uh, if there is a change of regime. By the way, I just wanted to say that when I use blackmail diplomacy, it wasn't just re referring to a possible Trump diplomacy, mm -hmm. but to the Biden-Harris diplomacy itself, uh, you know, that has been on. I mean, you know, four more bases uh, in 2023, yeah. uh, no uh, compensation at all, no rent. I mean, um, that's 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 blackmail uh, and practically our, our our foreign policy has been outsourced and defense policy to the United States so um, how did that happen uh, it's you know let's just put our minds into thinking how that happened well actually you are segueing into something we want to discuss and that are those are the EDCA sites. So the EDCA sites have increased from around four to now nine since the Marcos administration. How five do you nine. view five was it five before? So now yeah, five, five um, to nine. Five to nine, yeah. How do you view President Bombo Marcos's administration's strong gravitation to the United States? But before you answer that question, we'll have to take a short break. At the forefront, we'll be right back. Welcome back at the forefront. And Dr. Clarita, Dr. Walden, you mentioned EDCA sites as increasing, so it's now increased to nine. What is your view on this huge pivot of President Bongbong's administration towards the U.S.? Yeah, if I may give my take on that, Walden, because I was still NSA at the time this happened, no? at least the week before the U.S. ambassador announced the nine EDCA sites. Uh, this was mid-January. To be fair to uh, Bongbong, Marcos, at the start of his term, immediately sabi niya, nag-declare siya, ano, China is our friend, our neighbor, and our partner. Hindi lang yun laway, ha? Ano yun? Uh, lalamanan niya. Alam ko kasi, NSA, nakita ko yung interaction namin sa cabinet, sa wala sa cabinet, etc. Talagang gusto niya lamanan yun. There's beef there sa sinasabi niya. You remember he went to China and was met with all the, you know, yung uh, lahat ng... Uh, pwedeng gawin ng China to really meet him as chief of state. First week of January, 
Second week of January was the time I resigned, di ba? Wala na ako NSA. Third week of January, nag, tignan mo yung sequence ng ano, nag-announce itong sinong pangalan nito ni U.S. Ambassador. Siya nag-announce nung 9 Ed Kasides pa na, Walden eh. If you, oh, this is Ambassador siya. Babe Brumaldes. Hindi, yung, or, yung U.S. Ambassador dito. Ah, U.S. Ambassador, dito. ambassador that time. Oh, si, kaya nga, katawa-tawa uh, talaga eh. So, was ano, it Mary, Mary Kay Carlson already that time? Uh, whatever or, her name oh, is. Yes. No? Siya yung nag-announce. Kaya nagulat nga ako, sabi ko, oh wow. Uh, parang, uh, but anyway, that's something to talk about, but wag na lang, ano. So, ang ibig sabihin, si Marcos really wanted to have a partnership, a neighbor a relationship with China, but China's continuing bellicose behavior in the contested South China Sea, according to uh, him already and also according to me, pushed him towards the arms of the Americans. Sinabi ko yung kay Ambassador Wang Chilian Walden, kasi madalas nakikipag-usap si Wang Chilian and other top national security officials nila. No? And I said, kayo nag nagtulak kay ano bongbong eh, dyan. Because Bongbong really wanted, uh, uh, anong tawag doon, uh, uh, well, then yung balance. balance i- iba balance naman niya sana, parang nasa gitna tayo, di ba? Ang relationship between the US and China. Pero, sige, yung 100 na militia doon, dinagdagan pa nila. And ano. Sobra kasi, well, then, alam mo, nung NSA ako, araw-araw ganyang kataas yung intel na dumarating sa akin. And they are all yung talagang increasing aggressive behavior ng China sa contested South China Sea. So, nang gagawin ni Bongbong, talagang, to use your term, nag-pivot siya, nag pivot siya sa Amerika. Repivot na kasi dating andyan na tayo eh. Oo. So, siguro dapat din malaman ng mga tao na tignan po ninyo din ang dynamics nito. Hindi naman sa hawak ng Amerikano sa ilong si, ano, si Bongbong. Parang siguro uh, uh, yung uber-pragmatism ni Duterte, binigyan din niyang buhay sa kanyang uber-pragmatism din by moving towards the arms of the Americans. Well, Dr. Yeah. Walden, you used the term, we practically outsourced mm-hmm. our mm-hmm. foreign defense uh, mm-hmm. to the United mm-hmm. States. So what is your take on this pivot well, to the U.S.? Well, let me just say, uh, I may have some disagreements with uh, Professor Carlos, but I served in the House of Representatives with uh, Mr. Marcos. And during that time I was there, he was... He, he had hardly any notion about what was in the national interest of the Philippines. For the most part, he was just prancing around the, the house. Uh, and um, what uh, I think uh, is very important here is to realize that uh, the U.S. had a very strong hold on, on the Marcos family from the very start. If you remember, Karen, there's a, there was a 350 million contempt order issued by the this uh, judge in Hawaii, uh, which was renewed until 2031, that Marcos refused to comply with, with respect to the compensation of the victims of martial law. Uh, and um, in other words, he could be subjected to arrest anytime he went to the United States. The second thing, I think the Marcos family knows only one thing which is very strong, which is dynastic financial interests. And the U.S. knew that. And uh, if you remember, um, um, Biden used um, U.S. financial pressure to basically seize the assets of the uh, uh, oligarchs connected with Putin when the Ukraine war broke out. Marcos was very much aware that could also happen to him. So that's why I'm saying blackmail diplomacy because, mm-hmm. you know, it's five, uh, four more bases, no rent, no compensation, very strong gravitation to the United States uh, by somebody who was very unclear what was the national interest of the Philippines because only in his mind was only dynastic financial interest. So, that's what I meant by the outsourcing of our diplomacy to Washington. We might as well close down our uh, 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 national defense uh, ministry, uh, as well as a Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, or maybe keep it mainly but for overseas Filipinos, uh, you know, mm-hmm. their, their thing. Because when it comes to grand, <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, foreign policy involving great powers. That's Washington calling the shots. <laughs> and well, Ayan, Karen, so now dalawang is, left of center ang inimbita mo. <laughs> <laughs> but now, would, 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 if for example, what Dr. Clarita said that you have a Trump president who will charge the Philippines for who may, no, who because may, we, yeah. if we outsource it to them, but now we're getting it for free because of this blackmail diplomacy and as far as we're concerned that would entail some interest that's being served for the United States but if Trump starts charging us for any type of defense that we're getting as a benefit to the Philippines then what would that mean for the Philippines? Are we suddenly left yeah, defenseless against China? Latch on to that right away. Pinakamagandang gawin niya, i-charge na natin, uh, siya natin eh, for defending the, no, quote-unquote, defending the country, no, the Philippines vis-a-vis -vis, uh, against mm -hmm. China, uh, uh, ostensibly. Pero yun nga, uh, grab that ano, opportunity. O sige, total sinacharge mo kami, radically review MDT. What and yung can mga legs we niya. have in the MDT that would be to our advantage that for the U.S. is also something that is worth negotiating on yeah. if we're going to pay Hiningi, them. Hingin nga natin yung Article 5 ng NATO. Mm -hmm. eh. Yung Article, uh, Article 5 kasi, any attack on any of the members is an attack to all. Diba? And um, more likely, hindi siya papayag. So gawin mo yung channel para i-abrogate mo yung mutual defense treaty. Kasi kanina nga sinabi ko na, eh, talagang napaka-unequal noon. 1951, lugbok na lugbok tayo sa, ano, sa, ano tawag nito, sa gera. ba Parang pangalawa tayo sa war, so, sa, sa, sa kasiraan ng ating bansa. So, let's be smart, intelligent about it, Karen Walden, ano? Gawin natin ito. And tama si Walden, siguro ang, ang increasing uh, lament naming mga scholars na nagwa-watch ng ng ating political life. Talagang uh, napakahina ng mga uh, presidente natin sa foreign policy. Parang nasa backburner ng kanilang isipan. Tingnan mo si Cory Aquino Walden. Inutusan niya si Sahani to drop the Sabah claim. Inutusan naman ako ni Sahani na gumawa ng privilege speech niya to drop the Sabah claim. Siyempre hindi ako pumayag kasi iba naman ang damdamin ko tungkol doon. So nakita mo, ah, uh, Parang wala sa kanilang isipan yung, oh, sige, drop mo na yun, ano. Nagpasa ba kayo? What, yeah. Have we had a president like with a strong foreign policy? Yeah. Like, for example, former President Aquino. Sino Pinoy. Aquino? Dalawa yun. Eh. Pinoy, Benigno uh -oh. Aquino III. Uh -oh. he, it was under his presidency that we had this initiative to file a claim in The Hague, which we won, that arbitral claim. Mm -hmm. So haven't we had any president that at least had a sense of good foreign policy? Well, if I may just um, say that, uh, from my experiences uh, in terms of looking closely at the presidents, uh, when it came, like I was uh, part of the administration coalition when Pinoy was in power, and uh, I, I don't think he really was savvy about foreign policy. Uh, but uh, to come back to your uh, issue about Trump, uh, let me just say here that the interest kasi ni Trump has been mainly economic. Okay. Uh, and um, that's why even the way that he has approached uh, the bases in uh, Japan uh, and Korea has been okay, pay up. You know. uh, uh, and that's, I think, also the way he might approach uh, what's happening uh, in, uh, in the Philippines. Uh, and and he knows that there's 10 billion of Marcos money out there. So will he squeeze the administration that front? Don't underestimate the guy. Uh, business man yan eh. Uh, but the, ang sense ko lang kasi is that um, the, the, the bigger interest of Trump, if he comes to power, will be mainly protecting the U.S. economy. Uh, remember the one that escalated all the military measures in the Pacific to contain China was Biden. But of course, Trump uh, raised the tariffs, but he did not touch the military question because his main interest was really uh, regaining, rejuvenating the American economy through protectionist uh, measures. And, uh, 
uh, and true enough, I, I think he wants to bring back American capital away from Asia back to the United States. He wants to create trade walls. He wants to stop uh, migration. Uh, he, you know, he, he, he doesn't care about climate change, which is why he's very dangerous in many ways. But uh, as Professor Carlos said from the very beginning, your main interest niya is really Fortress America. But by Fortress America, do you think he's um, exclusive to just those that are natural born Americans? Like, for example, those who are Filipino Americans that have immigrated to the U.S. Do you think they would be affected by a Trump presidency? Well, uh, if I may, uh, Clarita, yeah, sure. uh, well, yung, yung domestic policies need Trump towards the races, uh, immigrants, um, women, I think it's bad it, domestically. And I think that must be recognized. Uh, but if you are to look at the Trump presidency as a whole, uh, you have to also bring in the question of foreign policy. And when you bring in the question of foreign policy, may, may malaking difference in Trump at yung mga Democrats. Uh, because the Democrats are all for open borders all, or... Yeah, like, but also uh, keeping the military containment of China at very high levels. Mm -hmm. And basically, they're provoking China at this point in time. Whereas with Trump, it's more unpredictable. Like, like uh, uh, Professor Carlos said, who would ever have thought that Trump would suddenly cross the demilitarized zone? <laughs> you know? Well, Trump and also said, lahat mga Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> Why did you do that? So my unpredictability factor uh, did Well, <laughs> Trump also said that he thinks that the Russia-Ukraine war would not have happened if he were president. Do you think that would have happened? Or that is tama something that's true? Actually, tama siya. Parang na-discuss natin to last time, no? Kasi, uh, unang-una, uh, nung first Trump, uh, Walden, nakita mo sila pag naglalakad sila niyan. Ako, I pay attention. No? Hinahawakan niya si Putin sa likod. Ano yun eh? Uh, hindi ba yung business na yeah. ano? Pay attention to those small things because they're big things. In other words, kung uh, miskin di siya nagbabasa, tapos meron nagpaintindi sa kanya kung bakit na, na, uh, nag-invade ang Russia sa, ano, sa Ukraine, maiintindihan niya kung bakit. In fact, he would, ano, another enlightened uh, political leader, Chancellor Angela Merkel, habi niya, kung siya pa yung Chancellor, hindi mangyayari yung Ukraine. Kasi alam niyang walang binayolate ang China dun sa, ano ba to, yung sa, sa gas deal, no? Dahil alam niya, Chancellor siya noon, 16 years ang Chancellor. At alam niya, yung pinramis ng Europe, uh, nung nag, ano, dis disintegrate ang USSR nung 1991, yung Ming Treaty, na hindi nila ipupush ang border towards ng border mismo. Ng, it's a security issue eh. So, um, ano yung uh, maganda kay Merkel? Merkel kasi is a scientist eh. Kaya nga, tol din, hindi sa pag-ano natin. Mas gusto natin, scientist talaga yung leader. Kasi yung scientist, uh, nagre-rely sa data, di ba? And uh, sana si Trump, kung siya yung mananalo ngayon, sana nga siya yung mananalo ngayon, maging better Trump siya. Ako nga, Walden, given all that you have ano, noted, ano, and I agree uh, there uh, for most parts, I want him to be a better Trump. I want the big industries in the U.S. to tell him that we are hurting sa ginagawa mo. Hindi ba, hinaharang mo yung China? Huawei nga. Total, uh, ito mo yung Huawei na ngayon, nagawa na ng sarili niya. Ano, Hinarang-harang nila. In other words, yung pangangarang nila sa China is strengthening the resolve of China maghanap ng ibang means para sila, ano, uh, uh, para mag-rise din yung economy nila na in the doldrums kayo. Dito may TSMC, nilipat nila sa Arizona. Alam na alam ko yan kasi yung anak ko nasa Arizona wall din. Sabi ko, oh my God, mag-create ng job yun, ano. Uh, so, I hope the big industries in the U.S. will uh, cajole Trump to think about the outcomes, outcomes meaning later consequences, ng action niya na trying to build Fortress America. Siguro maganda yun sa mga Amerikano na mga bobo, no? yung uh, parang gut issue sa kanila. Hindi nila nakikita down the line. It will hurt them more than it will benefit them, yung ginagawang harang-harang. Kanya nga, 
Fortress America or any Fortress Europe, pati Europe hindi ba nagaganyan, naglalagay din ng borders, will always be bad in the outcomes. Outcomes kasi hindi yung immediate result. Eh. Outcomes is further down the line. Oh, oh, oh. And in what way should the Philippines re-evaluate its domestic policies in response to a change in U.S. leadership? But before you answer that question, we'll have to take a short break. At the forefront, we'll be right back. Welcome back at the forefront. In what way should the Philippines reevaluate its domestic policies in response to a change in U.S. leadership? If, if I may, um, uh, Clarissa, I um, first of all, I, I think whatever the uh, outcome, whether it's Harris or uh, um, Trump we should really take advantage of it to really chart an independent foreign policy. Uh, I mean, that's the crying need of the moment instead of being a ping pong ball going from China to the US, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I think that would be important. The second thing that I would just like to say is that um, there is a very strong possibility you know, that the foreign policy of uh, Trump will be quite different from the Biden-Harris foreign policy. Because saying Biden-Harris foreign policy is you make America hegemonic and dominant on all fronts, from Europe to the Middle East to East Asia, Pacific, Latin America. Yung kai Trump naman, uh, as articulated by his friend Viktor Orban, who's the prime minister in Hungary, mm -hmm. is to focus on North America. And the rest is mm -hmm. up for negotiation. So America first policy. America first po policy, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you might even have a situation whereby when it comes to security policy, it becomes um, spheres of influence. Uh, with the U.S. not really fully contesting other powers in different parts of the world, which is very different from where it is right now because it wants to be hegemonic on all fronts. That's a very strong possibility when it comes to Trump. And Orban has already articulated this, that that is what Trump plans to do, is to pull back into a defensive kind of imperialism rather than an offensive kind of imperialism, which focuses on rebuilding, rejuvenating, according to what they say, is uh, the United States core or the North American core of the U.S. empire okay. rather than mm -hmm. fighting on all fronts. So if that happens, then uh, mm -hmm. this is an opportunity, as Professor Carlos said, for us to be able to chart our own course to the Asia Pacific, mm -hmm. you know, a and mixture of, of vision and pragmatism. But is the president of the Philippines now capable of that? Unfortunately not. Well, uh, I may have a slightly different take <laughs> on that, Walden. <laughs> I'm more... Um, uh, um, kasi I saw Bongbong up close eh. Uh, and while people demean him kasi wala siyang natapos, ganyan, ganyan, ano. Actually, nagbabasa siya, nag-aaral siya. And I think na-mention ko na to sa ano mo na... One time sa cabinet, nagdi-discuss kami ng blockchain. Ako, Walden, dumuguan tayong ako just understanding blockchain, ano. Alam ni Marcos yan. And kami tatlong nga nang ni-discuss ka rin. Kami ni... Yun yung nag-resign na DTI. Oh, President. si... Uh, ah, si Fred. Fred Pascual. Fred Pascual. Yes. Kami tatlong nang nag-uusap. Obviously, yung mga iba, siguro, they have some little knowledge. Kitang-kita mo talaga na alam niya yung sinasabi niya. Okay, that said, I agree absolutely yung sinabi ni Walden. This is really the time to change ng U.S. leadership na mag-track tayo talaga ng independent foreign policy. 
And uh, siguro at a later time when I'm no longer here and makikita yung mga memos ko kay ano, Bongbong, yan talaga yung tono ng mga memo ko. Pero siyempre, advisor lang naman ako, Walden. Sino naman ako niya? Nagtitanda lang ako ng maroya dyan sa tabi, no? <laughs> Ganun eh. No, advisor and, ka lang eh. Something I'm curious about, back in 2017, there was a Belt and Road Forum in China and some of the world leaders that attended there prominently were Putin, and this is with President Xi Jinping, and President Duterte and President Erdogan Recep of Turkey. But it seemed like President Duterte and President Trump get along well. And would you think that having President Trump as the elected president in 2024 would be good for former President Duterte? Just very briefly. I don't think so. Because si Duterte talaga is a friendly person. Eh? No? But remember, during his time, we really moved away from the American orbit and really moved towards China because of yung sinasabi ni Walden na uber pragmatism ni Duterte. He could not do otherwise. Actually, yun ang kanyang sagot. So, ang tama, ano, tama talaga si Walden na, na maglin tayo sa pragmatism ni uh, Trump. He's wanting to be a better Trump, part two, or to spar, uh, part two. And he's also being a, a, a businessman savvy person. Gagawa yan ng pluses and minuses niya eh. And I remember Walden, ano, talking about yung sinabi mo, sphere of influence. Actually, one time, sinabi niya na, ano, napakinig ko siya, sabi niya, ha? Huh? Yung mga rocks din sa South China Sea, rocks ang tawag niya eh. <laughs> mga rocks din sa South China Sea. Ni isang ano, buhay ng Amerikano, hindi ako magla, ano, niyan. We will not sacrifice one soldier for the rocks in the South China Sea. Oh? Um... Doon ko naisip na, naku, Diyos ko, sisingilin din niya yung Taiwan ito at sisingilin niya tayo sa Ed. Kasi sundan mo kasi yung train of thought niya. I think Trump, because if he will be given a chance bukas, no, uh, will be a better Trump. Yung mga mistake niya, kasi businessman siya eh, siyempre dami siyang mistake. Mga errors in judgment niya, wag na niyang ulitin. And I hope the businessman, ulitin ko lang to siguro, Walden, will really put some pressure on him na sabihin sa kanya, yung protectionist policies mo, yung akala mo yung uh, tariff and non-tariff barriers will protect the Americans, you are dead wrong. As, as you said, outcome, long term. Oh, oh yeah. Talagang masasaktan yung mga businessmen. Oh, oh. yeah. Let me just okay. add to... Uh, and um, because we're... Sorry, we're out of time. Yeah, I, just I have... To, okay, just No, I just briefly. wanted to say that I, I don't think Harris... I think Harris and Trump will be... Um, bad for us, both of them, in different ways. No? Uh, and um, what I think, though, is the big difference, just to come back, is predictable si Harris, unpredictable si Trump. And we know what to expect. It would be like I like said, unpredictable. more of like yes. what uh, well, then, yeah. I like unpredictable. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so last, and, and just briefly, one word. One word? This is just going... For you to guess, for you to guess, who do you think will win? Because elections in the U.S. is tomorrow. So, um, Dr. Clarita, you're just going to guess, Trump or Harris? I will not guess, but uh, I want Trump to win. <laughs> Sorry. Uh. Okay. Dr. Walden, wild guess. My think, I think that Trump will win, uh, but I don't think either side will concede the elections, which means that we're on the verge of open conflict in the United States. I would not be surprised if tomorrow's election in the United States is just like the 1860 election in the United States, which elected Abraham Ace. Lincoln, ah, which Lincoln. led mm. to the Civil War. Because ah, it oh. polarized the US. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I am bitin naman tong one hour, but uh, thank you oh, so oh, much, Dr. Clarita. You didn't even <laughs> talk about the Electoral College. I know. Oh. I wanted to talk about that. That's why I didn't even talk about that. I didn't even talk about that. I didn't even talk about that. Don't worry. You're not Dr. Clarita. We'll uh, find a way to have you both Thank back here. Thank you. That's what you Thank you so much again for your time. Whatever the outcome, the U.S. presidential elections is important to the Philippines. The results would have significant implications in our political, social, and economic policies. While U.S.-Philippine relations are expected to somewhat remain strong, regardless of who the next American president will be, we need to be in step with global dynamics to survive in these challenging times. Be timely informed, be insightful of the news, always stay at the forefront. Join us again tomorrow for meaningful conversations that would help you form an objective personal opinion. 
This is Attorney Karen Jimeno. Thank you for spending your hour with us.